in our M4 A79 Deluxe Asus motherboard box, we have the driver CD, a little Asus case logo upon your system, the manual, lots of SATA cables, our uh, Crossfire bridge connector. I do believe you only need one, or at least it's only supposed to come with one. And then we have our USB um, connector if you have one of the uh, motherboards that don't have pinouts uh, or entire single block connector. Uh, you can connect individual pins to this uh, so it's nice, easily labeled. I have it on, off of super macro mode <laughs> this time. And uh, it says under each one of the names, so you can kind of see it there. This here, I usually use myself just to make things easier for um, swapping boards in the future if you ever had to. It uh, has on there a hard drive connector, uh, LEDs, um, grounding, uh, all that stuff, all the labeling for it, power leads, power switch, reset switch. Um, so you can just pull it off, replace the board, put it back on, and not have to worry about matching them up to see where it's at, allowing that you're using another Asus motherboard. You have the IO shield plate, a <laughs> IDE hard drive connector or a cable, and then we have a uh, firewire and two USB connector um, back panel, which we'll put in right below the graphics card on this guy. So, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to take out this IO shield plate. I'll show you the motherboard once I get that out and everything out of here. But we want to go ahead and get this out of here so we can test lining up our motherboard. And the easiest thing to do that, because you can try and push on these sometimes, they'll come out. Um, what I like to do, because I don't like to risk getting my fingers cut, because sometimes these little pieces of metal can be quite sharp, is I just simply take a screwdriver and I just stab the heck out of it. And guess what? It comes out pretty darn good that way, and you really don't end up with any deformation of it or anything like that, believe it or not. And I have a dozen and a half of these at least, uh, so that goes in the trash. And installing a new shield plate is pretty easy, which we'll do that after we put our motherboard in. Okay, here is our beautiful motherboard. Uh, we've got all of our external connectors. They'll be sticking out of the back of that IO shield plate here. I'll go over those a bit later. You'll see that there is a um, connector for your processor, your processor slot, your main power connector, your memory sticks uh, slots. You also notice that there is conveniently a sticker placed over them to tell you all kinds of interesting propaganda which you probably already know since you bought the system. So go ahead and peel that off. Uh, it does have some kind of like metallic foil to it. I'm not a fan of seeing stuff like that on um, slots of any sort on motherboard. If you're going to give me advertising crap, stick it in the box. Uh, you got some PCI uh, e-slots for your graphics cards, all that stuff, normal PCI slots. Um, IDE connector, headers for the audio, if I can read that correctly from here. Uh, USB, firewire, all that good stuff. Um, optional switches here, which I do like to see. You probably won't see this on many boards. They actually be able to turn the system on without having to jumper it. So you can actually uh, do power on resets with it. Your header connectors that I was showing you before in your case. If you watched the previous video, these guys, uh, that's where you're going to be plugging those up into with that uh, little guy that I showed you before. Uh, another ID connection, I stand correct, this is for floppy and that's for the ID, I didn't see that over there yet. And uh, now the important thing is making sure that one, the case you have, it's going to actually fit the board. I've already gone through while it's in this nice little baggie is I went through and kind of laid in here to make sure it was going to fit, had proper room, proper clearance around, uh, things like this, all that good stuff. 
because if you don't have enough room, you've already got a problem. And what you want to do is go ahead and start putting in the standoffs. The trick to this is making sure you only put the standoffs in for each screw hole that you got. You can kind of see the little metal rings there. Well, I shouldn't say metal, but uh, rings have little solder dots around them. Got one there, we got one there, one there, there, and uh, there. So it's, you know, pretty much standard. Now you got nine of them. And what, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can take a piece of paper that's either just as big or bigger than your motherboard, and you can take a pencil and basically draw little dots through the holes, you know, set the motherboard on top of that paper and draw. Uh, you know, put your pencil through the hole, color them in, and you'll have dots where those need to be. You can take that piece of paper, set it in here, and just kind of punch on through and see that you've got everything lined up nice and good. Um, another way you can do it, and I usually do this because it's kind of quicker, is just kind of pick it up, put it in there, and kind of get a good idea of where it's going to actually line up everything in relation to it, and do it that way. Or if you've done a heck of a lot of them, like I have, you can pretty much figure out exactly where these holes are going to be anyway just by looking at it. I'm probably going to have to put one here, uh, here, here, here. Pretty much all the ones that are conveniently labeled with an A. Uh, not all motherboard case, or motherboard trays in a case will be labeled like that. Um, in this case, I'm fortunate enough to actually have them labeled. So we got our standoff here. And we're going to put in the hole. Nothing really special to this. Uh, easiest thing to do is take it, start with your hand, and go ahead and kind of start threading it in there. And there's really nothing difficult about it. You just go through. I like to loosely put them in, like that, with my hands only and then go on through, keep repeating the process for each one of them until I get them all in there where I think they should be uh, exactly how I think they're supposed to be in there in alignment to the board and everything and then what I do is a test fit of the board as I go through I put the uh, motherboard in the case and make sure that all the standoffs line up with the holes in the motherboard then once they are verified I take the board out and then I take the uh, nut driver or the little tool that they provide you with this case and tighten them up permanently give them a nice you know a little bit of a tight you know a little nice tight snug fit and uh, that's it I'm going to go ahead and put the rest in Alright, here's my quick through the motherboard. As you can see, the IO Shield plate is not installed yet. But uh, you can kind of see that there's screw holes are lining up with the um, standoffs are put in. Each one has a standoff I can see through it. And now we're getting to the point where I can't really get you good angles on these. <coughs> but go through, do a quick fit, make sure everything is visible through there and now we're going to go ahead and take the board out and show you how to put in the shield plate here's our shield plate notice you got uh, various holes in it all that stuff make sure that it lines up to the front of your motherboard you know all the ports here should match up with ports on there easy way to do it just kind of put it over slide it over I've already done that and putting in the IO shield plate is pretty easy. I um, want to make a quick note here. You may notice some of these have padding on them. Do not remove the padding. It is there for a reason. as to provide extra shielding, insulation, properties, all that good stuff. And all you do is go ahead and just push it on from the inside. That padding would be facing uh, the inside of the system. Make sure that the holes are going to line up with the um, board as you were going to be put inside the system you don't want to have it uh, turned around the wrong way and it's a little hard for me to do with one hand but you get the idea here you just 
basically take a thumb, or uh, if you're worried about getting pinched, you can use a flat bladed screwdriver. Push this in all the way around. I think it got in all the way. And then once that's done, we're going to do our motherboard.